Hello, I'm the Wacky Musician, and this is Make and Play Paper Maraca Hearts for Valentine's Day or at any time. Looks a little silly in my hand, but kids will love it. Nice little shaker there. And this is just a modification of the maracas we made a long time ago. Before we get started, just the normal quick stuff, uh, don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you like our videos, or if you're a clarinet player, there's lots of clarinet music there, as well as flute and trumpet music. And also take a visit to our other YouTube channel, the Auburg Animation, where we've got our feature-length Lego brick film, A Dog Named Time, and there'll be a card for that. So let's get started. All right, here is what you will need to make your heart-shaped maracas. You'll need scotch tape, always lots of tape. You'll need scissors, hollow. I don't know why I do that, but I always do that. You'll need a pencil. This is a lead pencil, but any pencil will do. Pens will do, too, but pencils are nice to be able to erase, and they're not as dark ruler or some sort of way of measuring. Uh, we will be doing this in inches. In fact, this ruler doesn't have centimeters on it. Must be a pretty old ruler because most of them do. But uh, it doesn't have to be the exact measurements I give. And you can always Google, go to Google to convert it to centimeters if you need your non-American measurements. <laughs> Aluminum foil. Um, this is optional, but it will help increase the sound of your maraca. You will need red construction paper or pink or whatever color you want your hearts to be. That could be like black hearts. No, I don't recommend that, but whatever you want to do. And you'll need a little bit of scrap paper or just plain white paper to work with. And as well as rice or some sort of beans. This is what's going to make the shaking noise. Uh, uncooked rice, mind you, not cooked rice. Don't eat your rice, save it. Um, or some small beans, something that can rattle around in your maraca. So, let's get started. All right, so to get started, we just need some paper, a ruler, and the pencil. So we probably only need one sheet, but I got extra here just in case. Take your pencil or pen or whatever you're going to use. And we need to mark off two inches. You can do some amount of centimeters if you're doing metric. You can look at what two inches is. It doesn't have to be exact. Just use the same measurement every time we measure. So I'm using two inches. I'm starting at the one and going to the three. Because this section may not, the straight edge doesn't go all the way to the end. It won't give me a full inch. So one to three right down the center of the page. And then put a mark at the middle point. Make sure you can see that. Uh, where are we? There. All right, that's our starter. Now we're going to take where that mark is, and we're going to put a light perpendicular line. Um, try to make it as perpendicular as straight across the opposite direction as you can. But make it a nice a light line, not very dark. So now it looks like that. Now we're going to use that line to measure out from the end of our dark line we need two more inches, or whatever measurement you're using, and we're going to measure it in a way that it hits, at the end of the two inches, it hits the light line. It doesn't really matter if you're doing this this way or down this way, it's all the same in the end. Do you want it to measure two inches hitting the light line? And do the same thing on the other side. Oh, and we should have done this on the other side. Uh, mark out the halfway point. I'm going to go back to the other one I did here. Also mark out the halfway point. And my phone's ringing. Awesome. Alright, so what you should have now is a triangle with, oops, get on screen, with halfway marks, with marks halfway through each side. Looks like that. This is, uh, if you're a teacher, this is your uh, math section of STEM right here. We don't really have an English section, except maybe listening to the English language while we do it. Following directions, I guess that could be an English thing. Um, thinking about for science, technology, English, math. But uh, anyways, I digress. So, we now need to take our ruler. This one has a light line through it. That's the first one we did. I'm going to take my ruler to this halfway point. I'm going to line it up with the point of the triangle. Oops, my leg broke. And put another very light line straight through on both sides like that show you. So there's two lines going through now. And then I'm going to do the same thing over at this other point. Line it up with the point of the triangle. And we're going to put a light gentle line through. Like that. I have a message so I'm probably going to check and see what it is. But that's what your thing should look like right now. A triangle with all sorts of lines running through it. Let me pause and see what that was interrupted. Alright, I never get phone calls. I'm like getting phone calls every five minutes while I'm trying to do this. Now, take your ruler, pick uh, one side of the triangle, whichever side you want to pick, it's all going to be the same, so it doesn't matter. Start at the point, measure out two inches or whatever measurement you're using, and angle it so that it hits the line, the light line we've drawn. And then draw a line to connect it. 
Then go to the other side, do the same thing. You don't need to mark halfway points this time. So now we have that. Oh, get on camera. Now go to another side of the triangle that we started on. It has an X in the middle where the lines intersect. And again, start at the sides, measure out two inches. Just uh, point out again so there's no confusion. I'm doing two inches, but I'm starting at one and going to three. That's because the straight edge on this ruler ends early. But that's still two inches. <laughs> And then do the same thing from the other side. So now you have that. We have one more to do. So go back, uh, starting with the triangle in the middle, the one with the X in it. The last side that's flat, start at the edge, measure out two inches till it hits the line. Now let's be consistent here. <laughs> Three to one. And you could consider this. Uh, Teachers, you could also consider this kind of an engineering part. So we're kind of designing something. This is kind of engineering-like if you're trying to get some STEM lessons in. All right. So your end result should look something like this. So now, that's the hard part. It's done. The easy part, grab your scissors. There's my scissors. Hello, I'm scissors. And I'm going to get this extra paper out of here. We just need to cut it out. Now, only cut the outside lines, one giant triangle here on the outside. Don't cut any inside lines. You're just going to cut out a giant triangle. All right, so now we have a triangle, and it's got markings of other triangles on it. All right, now, if you're going to use your aluminum foil, this is the time to bring out the aluminum foil. Uh, this is optional, but it does make a lot more sound availability. It makes it a lot louder is what I mean by that. So what we're going to do is take our pencil or pen or whatever. A pencil I think will mark on this. And we're going to trace, carefully trace our triangle here. So we need to cut out aluminum foil of about the same size. It's okay if it tears a little, we're going to cut it anyways. Oops, I went onto the paper. All right. All right. You can see that there's a triangle lined out on that. And now I'm going to cut it out. Alright, get rid of the extra. Alright, now you could use glue if you wanted to and glue this on. I'm just going to tape it on. You notice I didn't put glue in the uh, list. So I'm just going to tape it on. You want to tape it on the side that does not have your triangles. So markings. See those markings? You want to see that side. So flip it over. Back side of mine has some music on it. And we're going to tape it onto the paper here. Get my tape up. Okay. Let me line it up there, some tape. And just bend it over and tape it on. Now, you do want to get the tape over every edge so that there's no way for your rice to get under the aluminum. So you see, that side's completely taped across. Now i got to do the next one. You don't want any space for any rice to seep through. Oh, we're at the end of the tape. I have more. There we go. So you notice I put tape down the entire edge of each of the three sides. And the back side here still has my little triangle drawings. So we're going to need those. And now it's time to use those. So now it's time to fold these on the lines. So you see the line there. We're going to fold it back so the aluminum is up against the aluminum and just pierce it, crease it along that line. Fold another one right along that line. Aluminum is facing in and fold the third one along that line. So now you have three pieces facing up, aluminum on the inside. We're going to tape two of them together to start a pyramid. Don't tape all of it together, just two of them right now. I'm off the camera, there we go. Make sure the tape covers every hole so there's no place for the rice to get out. All right, so now we have partial pyramid here. Open on one end. This is now time to dump your rice inside. Make it enough for a good rattle, but not too much, because it's not going to rattle if it doesn't have any space. It needs space to rattle. I think that's probably good right there. And then you want to tape it closed. Make sure you get the tape across both sides all the way, leaving no holes. 
have to watch the kids carefully, make sure that they don't have holes in their shakers. Got the rice here, all right. And that was a uh, and left up in the air. And that's all, I just said and. All right, so again, it's very important that every seam be fully taped shut so that no rice can get out. Otherwise, when you shake your thing, there'll be rice going everywhere. Now, let's set our rice aside, and it's time to make a handle. Not uh, handle the composer, but handle for our maracas. So grab two sheets of paper, white paper. I guess it doesn't have to be white. If you want the handle colored, you can use colored paper. And we're going to roll it very tightly. So usually when I make tight rolls, I start with a very small bend over, and then I start bending and rolling on that. So we're going, we started the short side of the paper, we're rolling across the long side. This is scrap paper from a quartet I did. It says in the bleak midwinter, that was my last clarinet quartet. This is a misprint. That's from my scrap pile. Is it coming up quite straight? Let me see if I can straighten it up. All right. Because I have to, you know, tight is good. It doesn't have to be super tight, but you want to be fairly tight. And then put some tape on it to keep it closed. I usually do top, middle, bottom, especially if you're working with kids and you don't want to use tons and tons of tape. It's three pieces, top, middle, bottom. Like that, so you have tape, tape, tape. Now, this is possibly one of the harder parts. It takes a little uh, patience and balancing. You want to take one point of your pyramid, kind of stick it slightly. It won't really go in, per se, but kind of stick it at the end of the tube there. And now we've got to take tape, and we're going to tape the pyramid corner, one corner of it, onto our little tube. So you just tape from the pyramid to the tube. You're going to need to do it on all sides <laughs> at the end of my tape. I have more, so don't worry. All three sides, tape from the pyramid onto the tube. All right, not very straight. And let me change rolls. Right, I'm going to straighten mine out. And then take a piece of tape to secure the other tape right along the top of the tube here. Go ahead and roll a piece of tape there. That'll help pull those other tapes down. So this should be fairly secure. If it's not, then you need to add some more tape to it. Now you already have a shaker there. Basically the shaker, the maraca is done. What's not done is the pretty, the uh, aesthetics, you could say, the pretty part. We need to add the hearts to it. So now it's time for your construction paper. It's colored paper. I'm using red for traditional hearts. And I'm going to start by just drawing a heart. So if you're not good at drawing a heart, just start from a point, make a round curve up, and come down like that. Can't see, can you? <laughs> can you still see? I don't see it on the camera. But it's there. Hopefully you can see it. <laughs> and then do the same thing on the other side. Make a nice heart. Keep in mind the heart's going onto this, so don't make it too big. Don't make it too small. You want it to kind of fit over this, if we're on camera, fit over the side here. So once you have one, go ahead and cut it out. In fact, let's do a little trick here. If we take this extra sheet of paper, fold it over. So I'm using two sheets. If I fold this over and put this on top, I can cut three hearts out at once. I'm going to put a little tape on make sure it doesn't move on me while I'm cutting. But we're going to need three hearts. It'd be good if they're all the same. So this is kind of an easy way to do that. I'm just going to tape it on to keep it from sliding while I'm cutting. And we're going to cut out the heart we drew, but because we folded this paper under it, we're going to get this one and two out of that paper. You don't want to do it that way, you just have to trace the heart two more times. But this will save a little time and make sure they're exactly the same. Not that it's that big a deal if they're not. So we're cutting out our hearts. Try not to come out with too much of a point there. Try to stay on camera. I'm going to go ahead and remove excess paper. Make sure the paper does not slide on you. And we should have three identical hearts here. So these two didn't quite get the center cut out right. There we go. Just make that adjustment. There we go. All right, there's our three hearts. Now take your uh, maraca here. Take some tape. Really should invest in a tape company. Roll the tape on top of itself so that's sticky on both ends. Stick it right there at the end. I'm at the where the uh, triangle pyramid enters the stick. There's tape to the stick near the bottom and put one on the same side near the top. Take your heart. And it can over overlap the stick a little. 
and tape your heart on. Try to position it so the triangle won't be seen when you're looking at the heart. I'm quite centered. Let me see if I can be more perfectionistic. I think I did better on my other one. But. So now we have a heart on one side like that. Now we need to do the same thing to this side and the same thing to this side. So take some more tape, roll it onto itself, press some near the bottom of the triangle, take some tape or pyramid, roll it on top of itself, and put some near the top of the pyramid. Try to get centered here. Take another heart. Try to get it about the same height as the previous one. I'm trying to get mine centered. And press it on. So now you have two. Oh, get on camera there. There we go. Two, and that one's blank. So now we got to do this one. Take your uh, tape. Roll it. So put some near the bottom. Put some near the top. And add your last heart, trying to make it the same height as the other hearts. Say about right there. Press it on, press it in, and press on all three. And there we go. There's our heart-shaped maraca. Now you notice that this one, the stick's a lot longer than the one I made before. See that? So what you can do, I thought the stick seemed a little long, so I cut it off. So you can take this and just push hard on the scissors and you might need a adult's help if you're a kid. It takes a little effort. <laughs> All right. And then you've cut your stick, and now you have a short stick that makes more sense size-wise. So now I have two heart shakers. You could make two, and you have two maracas. All right. So now you have your heart-shaped maraca. Make another one, and you'll have two maracas. All right. Happy Valentine's Day, or whatever time of year it is. And this is a Wacky Musician shaking out.